stand by for what? Oh, oh. hi, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Call hi, boys and girls. <laughs> <laughs> you know, not too many people out there probably in TV land have living rooms or dining rooms where people say stand by and then I you know. start talking. Yeah. It's uh -huh. just not natural to no. do that. But anyway. There's it, something uh, terrible wrong with something it. Something ain't natural about it. <laughs> Larry Bly here. Laban Johnson here. And Cooking Cheap all around us here. Everywhere. We're, Everywhere. We're as cheap as you're going to see it's this week. on the air right. everywhere. And the mail is just rolling in from all over. We got this fine postcard right here from Myrtle Beach, South oh, Carolina. Myrtle Beach. <laughs> Myrtle Beach. It's where they learn and to it's fly. Rachel Stone. And she said, I enjoy your cooking program very much. Please send me number 810. Uh oh. Rachel, forget it. This is not a, a self addressed stamped envelope. You don't get it. Gentlemen, just happened to tune in Channel 11 and caught your show. <laughs> They told us we'd never be on that channel again. I love it. <laughs> love your sense of humor, watching and laughing at both of you. Thanks a million. Do me a favor, please. Tell your producer. That's Dave Ureno. Back there somewhere. Right. That you both look stupid in a tie in the kitchen. What? Also. Well, well all right, all right, all right. Your shirt right, sleeve I'll... button. That ought to sound real good. <laughs> Turn That's up right. the cup. Kelly's mic, Mark. Yeah, but anyway, take the tie off and put on an apron. And uh, now, enjoy cooking for everyone. Anyway, that's from uh, a viewer in uh, Mrs. Joseph Habib of St. Joseph, Missouri. Down in Missouri, they're watching us. And Carl Lucas from South Canaan, Pennsylvania wrote in and said, Dear Laban and Larry, this is just a short note to let you guys know how much we enjoy watching your show, Cooking Cheap. It seems that I can miss any of the primetime shows on network television, but if I'm going out, I must record your show to watch you later. You guys crack me up. Isn't that wonderful? It is. Well, thanks so much, Carl. Appreciate it. Dear Mr. Bly and what's his name, uh, we've been watching the program. <laughs> One was filmed in 1986, it says, and they watch on PBS Channel 28 in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. But she says they're getting ready to move to Indianapolis or Chicago. They're not sure which. <laughs> No, it says they hope <laughs> Which way the it truck all. goes. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever they drift to. It says, we hope your program's on there since we're going to be moving there. And that's from Mary Ann Plank of uh, Pasadena, California. And John Humphreys from uh, Lawrence, Kansas <laughs> writes this little, little teeny weeny note right here. and says, how many shows do you have? How many recipes do you have? May I get all of them? No. By the way... <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys for real? Who cares? Keep up the good work. Thanks. P.S. Any books? Well, to answer your question, we have pushing 200 shows. We've Ooh. got over, nearly 400 recipes. No wonder I'm tired. And uh, we, maybe we'll have a book eventually. <laughs> That's a sore subject with us. And thanks. And no, you can't get all the recipes. You can only get one or two. Hmm. Well, this person's on a fixed income, enjoys a show for obvious reasons. And listen to this. This is from George Lennon of uh, Star Root Romance, Arkansas. <laughs> oh, Isn't that a wonderful place to be My for romance. romance. Well, Thanks an awful let's lot. Let's go we cook. appreciate that. Now we're going to go to the kitchen. I'm sorry for my informal attire, but I didn't feel like dressing up for the show. Well, I felt like dressing up, but some chump said we look stupid. So, you know, what can you do? <laughs> I'm going to be preparing squash fritters. I'm going to fritter the show oh, away. Oh, wonderful. Uh, and uh, this is sort of like, you know, I've decided this is sort of like potato cakes without the potatoes. Right. That's sort of what it's mm. like. And, and I'm doing uh, greens with corn. Ooh. And I want to just start something real quick, and then well, I'll let you. Why don't you start All right, take that. <laughs> <laughs> but now you've started it. Right. Okay, go ahead. All right. This, this is a pot of boiling water. And this is a slice off a big end of a ham hock, or you could use a whole ham hock, but they cost a lot of money. Remember, they used to give them away practically oh, to butcher yes, shop. Oh, yes, indeed. The I ham hock ham, of the week club. I priced the ham hock yesterday. It was three dollars and sixty some cents. Oh, are you kidding? I, I'm me? not kidding. That's terrible. It was terrible, outrageous. So I found they got a slice of one. So this goes into the boiling water, and this is a big uh, strainer full of collard greens fresh from the grocery store. Ooh, they are pretty. And I'm going to pick these greens here a little bit, which means I'm just going to tear out the heavy stem and tear the leaves and check and make sure they don't have no ugliness on them. And in a little while, we'll come back and I'll show everybody how to feed the pot with the collard greens. Larry, hit it. Is there some reason why this thing is raging hot on at my... Is oh, I guess... 
<laughs> oh, someone's trying to burn me up in this kitchen. What? All right, it's off. Is there. it off now? Uh -huh. I almost put my hand on that like this. It was just off. I'm going to do squash fritters, <laughs> and I got to tell you a sad story. Last night, yesterday afternoon, I went out and bought all the squash. <laughs> And I'm so smart, I didn't want to have to drag it all in, put it in the refrigerator, get up this morning, drag it out to my car, yet da 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 This show is being taped right now in the middle of winter. Wherever you're seeing it, it'll probably be. But anyway, I left all this in, in, in my car <laughs> this morning. All of these things had frozen solid like rocks. That he is. <laughs> and so had my eggs. Well, now the eggs have thawed all day, and I think they're okay. <laughs> I believe they are. I hope they are. If they're not, we're in big trouble on this one. That first one rattled. That's true, it did. But I had did to you have hear Mr. Him? I Johnson. I can hear them all back in the control room. Everybody, even the engineers are laughing at you. Because even an engineer knows better than to leave his squash in his trunk. Well, but now let me tell you something. But now let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You can freeze eggs okay. You don't want to do it very often. I wouldn't advise it on a regular basis. But you can do that, and they'll come out of it. But you do not want to freeze these things. They're ruined for all time. First thing we got to do is we got to grate two cups of yellow squash. It says the outside only. I assume that means that you don't want to get into the seed. Right. All right. Down so we're just going to grate parts. Yeah, two cups of this stuff, and this will take just a couple of quick moments. I have a funny feeling this is going to be a mess because this stuff gets like glue when you start playing with it. Um, well, let me show everybody what Straight a collard slick, too. while you're doing that. This is a collard leaf. Now. You can use any kind of greens that you want with this recipe. You can use kale or mustard or turnip greens or rape, which is a kind of green, or collards if you can get them. Uh, spinach is too tender a green to use with this recipe, so forget that. And you have to wash them and uh, wash them real good to get the sand off of them because these are grown in sandy soil. and. It's just like spinach. You just wash them real good, and then I tear them up into smaller pieces because uh, they're more bite-sized that way. I was in a fine restaurant that just opened recently in Roanoke that has fabulous food, and they served a, a dish with uh, collard, greens. collard greens, and it was like eating dirt. I complained the whole evening. I'm not kidding. They, I don't believe it ever washed any of it. There was so much sand and dirt in it, it was terrible. You have to do it, folks. You really do. Uh, Even you, if you run a restaurant, you right. have to do it. You have to. These, but it, And you just cook your ham hock. You can cook it for several hours. Now, if you've got heart trouble like some of us do, one thing you can do uh, to help alleviate some of the problem with that extra fat uh, that we don't need is to lose some weight. Is to <laughs> <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> Foolish <laughs> child, I swear. <laughs> now, one thing you can do is cook your uh, your uh, ham hock in the water a couple of days ahead of time and just cook the ham hock for four or five hours and then take the hock out and put your uh, broth in the refrigerator overnight and while it's in there, the, the fat will coagulate on the top and you can take it off. Or you can do it the approved southern manner as we're doing now and don't worry about it and go to an early grave. I must commend you. You sure do know your squash. Now here's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm doing that down right to the seed. I'm do I know it's over there, but I thought it was going to show it over here. I, you see that? Can you see it from there? Okay. <laughs> well, actually, I don't care whether it can or not. Well, let anyway, me tell you, when I was buying that squash today I down on the market, I what I was going to say. Yeah. Uh, they sold me. They said, "Don't you want some uh, fresh tomatoes?" And I said, "No, they're always off." They said, "These aren't." These were grown in, in Bonsac in a hot house. Oh, no. And that's not funny to anybody else except those people except who people live right from around there. here. And it won't be and too Bonsac funny for them. And Bonsac is a, a little small town near here. But the, somebody's got a greenhouse and they're growing real fine, beautiful, luscious looking tomatoes in it. It's a little so. town that everybody beats up on all the time, but a lot of nice people from there. Yeah. Let me, now let me Some of your family came from there, yeah. didn't you? I am related. But you can't hold that against them now. I'm related to the Bonsacs. Now, here's my ham hock, and just pretend this has been in here for several hours, and I'm going to feed these collards down in the water. Just put them down here, and don't worry if they fill up the whole pan because they will uh, hypenex, and uh, they will just hypenex. sink right on down in it. What? Hypenex? Dumb cluck. <laughs> Ask me something dumb, and I'm going to give you a dumb answer. I isn't he just ignorant today? I have all these smart remarks. I'm a little here. wacky. I've uh, <coughs> oh, been hitting the wacky juice early. 
Yeah, man. Either that or I want. I do want to commend you, despite the fact that he spends the entire show every week calling me a dumb clock and a buffoon. <laughs> I want to compliment him because he actually knew what he was doing and and bought just enough for two cups worth of this stuff. See, I'm nice to him. Uh huh. The dumb cluck. <laughs> It's, it's that stuff is sort of now you take one egg <laughs> it's sort of what <laughs> it reminds me of something I can't think of. take one egg and this egg has been pre-frozen now you see how it looks like a regular egg doesn't it but this one's the one I'm worried about because it listen it rattles can you hear that well I guess let's so. let me get a bowl Must and see be what the it looks buttons like on the fur coat that little chicken has on <laughs> <laughs> a button let me see if this egg's probably okay. still got a lump of ice do you think you think maybe well, no, it's all right. Nothing wrong with it. Proving that you can indeed. Except it's got a shell in it. Well, I mean, I'm just doing it for demonstration purposes. I just did that just to look at it. Now, I'm heating up some oil over here, by the way, while I'm, uh, while I'm getting all this stuff done. All right, one egg, uh, a small onion, yeah. My mind is just wandering today. I've yeah, got a lot of things. Yeah, we saw out in the parking lot a while ago. <laughs> last, night, last night, in the middle of the night, it wandered off and went into another neighborhood. It was just real strange. It, oh, it was man. looking for a better time. It was, it was looking for a better head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm chopping up an onion. Is that what it is? <laughs> I don't know why I felt like I had to explain that. Just to show hit a lag there for a minute, I know well, it got a little boring. If uh, Dennis can get a shot down here in this pan, what do you mean? Notice, if Dennis can get a shot, can well, Dennis get a shot, or well, can I Dennis get a shot? Anyway, notice that these collard greens have turned a beautiful emerald green. They are pretty, gorgeous. Now collard greens are on the tough side, so these things are going to need to cook for a good while. But you know what? Years what? ago, I decided, remember a couple of years ago when I put out a garden for both of us? Uh -huh. You paid for the seeds and I did the work. Uh-huh. Dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Last time I did that, he, that, now that time I really was dumb. But we put out a right good garden, and I did uh, collard greens. Uh -huh. And I'd never done them before, and I'm going to tell you, I will never do them again, ever. You cannot get them clean. They had all kinds of little bugs and uh -huh. all, mm. artifacts and things. I know. was boiling some. Well, I better not even tell this story. I'll tell you. I was boiling some up at home one day, and I went to get them out, and there was just all sorts of things floating around on top of the water. It just grossed me a out. Little bug. Took them out back on that porch of mine and just threw them to the wind. And next year they came up, and they were little bug plants everywhere. <laughs> all right, that's an onion, small onion. Breadcrumbs. Now it doesn't say how many breadcrumbs. I assume some of that squash has gotten under my shoe. <laughs> you need enough. Well, while while you're doing that, let me. Oh, like stepping on a worm. <laughs> let me show everybody about seasoning this dish. Now this is to taste. Except not as much fun. Those fool cookbook editors of ours won't like this <laughs> recipe. There it goes. Everyone's a fool, a buffoon. Well, fool, buffoon. Now, all right. Oh. Anyway. These are red pepper flakes, and you just want to put in maybe a, a half a teaspoon down in there. And we're going to put in some other things. Uh, oh, let's put in some dill weed. And I like a lot of that, maybe a tablespoon full of dill weed. Half a cup of grated cheddar cheese. And uh, you can use some. This is some granulated garlic. I would prefer other kind, but this is what people around here use. Now, what is it? Granulated garlic. Just try. And here is some oregano, and I'm going to use maybe a teaspoon of oregano, and maybe a similar amount of basil. And yes, that's an awful lot of stuff. But cheese don't smell good. Mm. Half a cup of grated cheese. Well, I can't even get this thing open. Boy, I'm telling you, they get everything. <laughs> what if yeah, I was? I, believe, I think he's got right wimpy. <laughs> get that thing. Although, now, wait a minute. I don't know if I ever want to use it again. You don't know where it's been. <laughs> <laughs> Hand it to it. Well, it sailed right under the no, refrigerator. No, no, right there it is. Oh. All right. It, it, I've spent the biggest <laughs> part of the show on the floor. <laughs> but then I spent <laughs> Uh, just like you did at your Christmas party. <laughs> <laughs> Under a large piece of furniture, as I uh, recall. <laughs> yep, it was Rex. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
uh, some breadcrumbs. I'm going to add some breadcrumbs to this. Doesn't say how many, so I'm just going to have a good time. Now, you know what? I brought in some extra stuff from home. I had cans of this stuff, cans mm -hmm. of the stuff laying around. I said, I'm going to get rid of it. So this meal is not costing nary as much as it should or could have because I'm using up stuff. A half a cup of grated cheddar cheese. And now comes the fun part. There is no shortcut, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this is the only way you can do this. It's really good if you could get your thumb down on that egg. Uh, hey, hey, hey. Uh, Here you go, boys and girls. Food's ready. <laughs> now, if you could get your hands down that egg first and break that up real good, that's, that's always the best part. That's what I like. All right, and then start smushing it around, mix it around. We're going to make some patties. We've got some oil heating right now, and uh, we're going to make these into patties. I don't think these will ever go into patties. <laughs> <laughs> you probably loose. go ahead and put another I think we have to put know. another egg in there. It ain't going to stick together. You got carried away with the uh, crumbs. I got to add another egg. Remember, if that happens, put another egg in it. <laughs> Where's that egg? <laughs> oh, that was a warm one. It had been sitting on that stove. <laughs> <laughs> it felt pretty good. Uh, can you believe oh, this egg. idiot put that many? <laughs> <laughs> I'll swear. <laughs> All right, now that's better. That's better. See, this isn't as this isn't like you know. I'll bet what you could like? take. I'll bet you could take uh, uh, some uh, uh, maybe some some kind of flour and roll it in in flour. You know your patties. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't call for that, so no. don't do that. So don't do that. So now what we're going to do here is we're going to put them on a hot stove that's been heating up until they're browned. You could eat them raw if you wanted to. <laughs> Except for the eggs. Well, people eat raw eggs, good heavens. <sighs> Just put those in there. They're going to be real pretty. Now, do not cover them. Fry until it. What are you, somebody in here uh, talking oh. with you or what? You, you, you got your, you're showing your resume? Yeah, Mike? he's leaving sooner than he thinks. He's having a better time uh. than we are. <laughs> Well, have you noticed? He's back there working little, on another show. Yeah, they brought a little, well, it's those people from the rescue mission. <laughs> Did you see that show right in here? Do you know they used our set for a show from the rescue mission? I was going to say something about it. Cooking Cheap just went off the air, and lo and behold, another show came on with a bunch of different people on our set. Showing how to cook food for the homeless. Sort of hobo stuff. And there you go, and that's the best part of it. Now you run after a friend and smear it all over them. They laugh at anything in the back right now. If you yeah. notice what? Well, I'm going to wash my hands off. Well, here, here, Johnson. I was just trying to be helpful. Don't touch me. Well, <laughs> here, now let me have your little hands, and we'll dry them off. <laughs> I don't understand why. All of a sudden, he feels like he has to be benevolent to me. Okay, boy, those things are frying along. They smell right good. Woo! They are. Let me have that thing. Let me check on my greens now. Now. This stuff should cook for several, probably a couple of hours. Ooh, these are smelling good, and they're looking pretty, too, and brown. Very and nice. I could cut the heat down just a tad. The last step after these things have cooked for a couple of hours is you take two ears of corn. Please shuck the corn. Do not put the corn in no stuff with the shucks Sherlock. on it. Well, you know, there's some people that are literal-minded out there. Shuck your corn, and you're going to put your corn down in there, and you're going to let it cook for 10 or 15 minutes. When you get through with that, after it's cooked for all that long, you take out the ham hock, and you mince the meat up with your knife Whoops. on the board. And then you throw the minced meat back into the pot, you throw away the bone and the fat, and you put the whole thing in the refrigerator overnight. That's right. This is a real easy dish to do, but it does take two or three days to make. You put it in the refrigerator, it must stay in the refrigerator overnight, and after that happens, what goes on here oh. is that your corn takes up the flavor of the greens. Now, you know, I love corn on the cob, and I never cook mine at home longer than three minutes. But Nor this, do I. I agree with you totally. But this is a unique and wonderful way to do it. Should and we show our recipes here? Yeah, I guess I don't so. believe we have. Let's show our recipes. All right. Those recipes coming right up right now. There they are. Squash fritters, two cups grated yellow squash. Outside, do not use the 
little seeds inside, an egg, half a small onion, breadcrumbs, and a half cup grated cheddar cheese. And for the corn and greens, two pounds of greens, mustard, kale, collards, rape, etc. cetera, a uh, half teaspoon of red pepper flakes and salt and pepper to taste. Uh, you can use some dill weed, and I used oregano and basil too, a ham hock and six or eight ears of corn. And you just cook them all together and you have a wonderful dish. Well, these have gotten nice and brown on the outside and mm -hmm. you just do them slowly. Yes. You know, I think uh, we need to let Miss Witch come in at this point, but uh, she's going to fly in very gently because the time of her nativity is near. That's right. You know, Mrs. Witch is going to have witchlets here in a few days, or a few weeks rather. She better stay out of my fritters. Right, now come here. Now take it easy, honey. Swoo woo. All right, now, dear Mr. Johnson and Mr. Bly. That's us. I know it may be too much to ask, but I wonder if you might name a dish for me. Actually, it is not for me, but rather someone very near and dear to me. Hmm. We have spent hours together here on the farm and have a great deal of mutual respect and admiration. On these long, cold winter nights, it is truly wonderful to have a loved one to keep you warm and to give you good company. As you may now have guessed, I am talking about peaches, my prized sal. Please name a recipe for her, knock pork chops, please. And it's from Sylvester McCadden of Clarence, oh, Ohio. That nice. Well, Sylvester, we'll, we'll try to that. do that next week. We'll have uh, some peach dish and name it for peaches. Should I bring that over? Or no, you I'll, I'll bring it over. Let me, I have to get a proper... By the way, <clears throat> uh -huh. we wanted to, uh, Miss... <laughs> You know, we, we are just so fortunate here. Have, can you see this? I, I didn't sh tell them I was going to show them this. We meant to show them this a little bit early. Look at this. Isn't this just lovely? Doris has done up three little ducklings, and they're made out of real parts of, of real vegetables. Isn't that cute? It certainly I is. I wish you had talent like that, Johnson. Oh, I know. Let me have your uh, there you go. here, and I'll serve you. Now, let me just corn. dump one of these off on your plate. And some greens. Oh, this looks good and it smells good too, and you know it's good for you. These greens are just full of vitamins. Probably full of a lot of other bugs and stuff too. No, I know you cleaned them though. Right, I did. I cleaned He's them. He's good at this because he had done these before. But not here on the show. Not on the show. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Marvelous. And as soon as this corn sort of cools off a little uh, bit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get into that too. We'll have some of that. Let me try this squash fritter. Mm. Oh, it's good. It mm, is real mm, good. Mm. Mm. Excellent. Well, boys and girls, it's been fun. It really has. Thank you an awful lot.